Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from PocketNow.com, and this is the software review of the HTC Incredible S. Let's get to it. Now again, this is an unlocked European smartphone that happens to work on T-Mobile's 3G network here in the USA. You can buy it unlocked for about $640 from Negri Electronics. Again, the thought is that this is coming to Verizon as the Droid Incredible 2. We'll have to wait and see if that actually happens, but it's quite possible at this moment in time. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about the software. We're going to go right into Quadrant Standard and run a speed test. And, you know, we're actually going to compare this head-to-head -head with the Desire HD. This is actually the Inspire 4G, but we're going to call it uh, the Desire HD because it's the same device. Now, the reason we're going to compare this is to make a point. The Desire HD is HTC's last generation 2010 high-end smartphone. The Inspire S is HTC's new high-end smartphone for 2011, or at least that's the only information that we have from HTC at this time. It's very likely that HTC is going to come out with something much higher end at CTIA called the Pyramid, the dual core processor, a higher resolution screen, but we just don't have confirmation on that. So we have to give HTC uh, the benefit of the doubt that the Inspire S is, is one of the best devices they're going to have in 2011. If we go to system information, you're going to see that these devices have the exact same internals. They are the same device. So if we scroll down to CPU, we have the same ARM, ARM V7 processor. That's the Qualcomm Snapdragon. Frequency is 1024 megahertz. Uh, everything else is the same. The BOGO MIPS, for some reason, shows as a different number. That's another measurement of CPU speed. But because these CPUs kind of scale up, they scale down depending on what you're doing, uh, you don't always get the same measurement. Memory is exactly the same. We've got 768 megabytes, although user accessible is about 630. There's 8 megabytes more available on the Desire HD. And everything else going down the same. The GPU is the same. The Adreno 205, OpenGL ESCM 1.1, and so on and so forth. So th this is these are basically the same device. So if we run the benchmark, we should get probably the same results, although it would be nice to see the Incredible S come out with better results since it was released a full year later. Let's see what happens. Okay, here are the results. The Incredible S is no slouch, scoring a benchmark score 1400. Uh, over here, the Desire HD is much higher, it's 1600. Uh, the, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's kind of surprising that a device that came out a year later and that was sort of HTC's high end has scored a lower benchmarking score than the last generation phone. Again, this may not be fair because HTC isn't done yet for this year and we're likely to see uh, a better phone come out at CTIA, but it's just an interesting observation here. Uh, in terms of day-to-day -day performance, as you're going to see in this video, the Incredible S is quite good. It's not as fast as the Desire HD. Opening programs, instead of being instant, have about a 0.25 second delay. But let's actually compare these side by side in doing some other things. So we're going to do uh, some web browser speed comparisons here. And let's see what we have. We're going to just uh, load the desktop pocket now. And I'm going to zoom in over here. We've got plugins set to on demand so that they aren't going to show up. Actually, we wanted to get to uh, the desktop version here. Okay, so here they're both loading the same page. And we're going to move around on the page and see which one performs better and do some speed tests from there. So it's loading on the, the Incredible S. Okay, let's move down quickly. Looks good. Looks good. Both of them look good. Pinch to zoom. Quite smooth on both. Let's click on this link at the same time. The screen on the Incredible S, as you can tell, is much more clear and crisp. Both of these are set to automatic screen brightness, but the Incredible S just has a lot more clarity. Okay, so it looks like the Desire HD finished slightly faster, although that might have not been fair. I mean, they were so close. Let's actually go to a longer page. We'll go to ngadget.com and do the flick scroll test to see which of these can keep up the best. Okay, let's do the flick scroll test on Engadget. It's a very long page. We want to see if the phone can keep up. So we're going to flick very quickly. No checkerboard on the Desire HD. Flick very quickly on the Incredible S. No checkerboard. Very good. So these are exhibiting a, a simil similar level of performance. Let's zoom in here. We're going to click on this link at the same time if possible. Boom.
Okay, and the Incredible S actually finished slightly faster there. So very good web browsing performance on the Incredible S compared to the Desire HD, despite it scoring a little bit lower in the benchmarks. So let's take that off the scene here and talk a little bit more about the Incredible S. Of course, we've got the button rotation, which we talked about in the last video. The problem with the button rotation is that they leave the buttons looking a little bit low quality. If we tilt the device slightly, you can see how they're getting brighter. Now they get dimmer. The button on the right is the most dim. The button on the left is the least dim. Kind of strange. And of course, the buttons will rotate there. Okay, so let's go back to the home screen and talk about HTC Sense. Now, HTC hasn't made any changes except for the addition of one widget uh, to the newer version of Sense. They're going to upgrade Sense when these devices, the Incredible S, the Desire S, the Wildfire S, that they announced at Bubble World Congress get Gingerbread 2.3. So right now, this is the same version of Sense that you've seen on the Desire HD, on the Legend, on a lot of phones that are out there. Uh, and, and quite simply, we get our seven home screens. We get Leap. You've seen this a million times before, although here's a little feature in Leap that you may not know about. You can actually move around home screens like so. Kind of cool to know about. They don't make it immediately obvious. Then we can go and add some widgets. And let me show you the, the, the widget selection here. I'm not going to show you every one, but just kind of browse through some of these. So we've got bookmarks. Of course, there are 72 two widgets here. The Desire HD has 71. And I'm going to show you which one is new. So we've got a lot of really high quality, beautiful HTC widgets that you can expect to have. So we're gonna go back and let me just show you immediately the one that is new. It is called Navigation or Navigate. So we click on that. This one is new right here, press select. And then you can choose which of your footprints you wanna to navigate to. But let's try to go to the Statue of Liberty, click done. And this way, you have a quick link to navigate to somewhere right from your home screen. Pretty cool. Let's say you go to uh, the same place all the time and you want to be able to navigate somewhere. You pull this up, you tap on Statue of Liberty, and it's going to bring up the HTC navigation program. And it wants me to turn on the GPS satellites in order to get it working. Here we go, a little bit choppy on the video there. We're using HTC's navigation program. So it's getting directions and it's flying out. And here we go, it shows us the how to get there. Pretty cool. Anyhow, let's move on. So this is the car panel, uh, which will allow you to navigate from your phone, free guidance, very cool stuff here. Okay, so let's go into the program tray here. Now the program tray in the new version of Sense will actually have three sliders along the bottom that let you filter between favorite applications, downloaded applications, and all applications. There's not much you can do with the program tray, although there are a couple of options. Uh, you can go into list mo mode, you can, you can share a particular app if you want to, or you can sort them alphabetically by date or uh, by date including most recent and the oldest, which is really handy because then you can put the apps that you've downloaded um, right at the top. So you can get a record right when you bop, pop into uh, the program tray, you can see the apps that you've downloaded most recently. So let's look down the list at some of these apps that come in on the device. You can obviously the top two rows are apps that I've downloaded. So we've got basic stuff here. We've got the navigation panel you saw. It comes with Amazon MP3. Let's see, flashlights, always good, FM radio, the HTC Hub. You can actually hook this up to htcsense.com so that you can remotely manage your phone. It's really cool. Uh, you just plug in your, your username and password. You, you, you set it up on your phone, and then you can locate your phone anywhere in the world. You can have your phone ring. You could have it display a lock screen message, or you can remotely wipe all the data if you leave it in the backseat of a cab car, and you're never going to get it back. We've got the HTC Lex application, uh, which we've seen before. And this wants you to, to log in with your, with your htcsense.com account. It'll suggest applications for you, kind of a good way to discover new apps. And of course, HTC Hub should do the same thing and ask you to log in. That'll give you access to wallpapers, skins, ringtones, and other assets from HTC servers. We've got the music program. This does have that SRS capability built in, uh, which is the Dolby Labs uh, functionality. It's actually two different things. Dolby Labs and SRS are two different things. But what happens is that when you play a song, 
you can switch up here to SRS. Now, it looks like there's no Dolby Labs, only SRS. So SRS makes it sound slightly better. If you're listening with headphones, turning on SRS will make the bass sound boomier and the highs sound crispier. So just something to consider. HTC is including that with all of its new smartphones. Of course, there's a nice cover flow here, but of course this is standard for all the HTC music applications. Really nice animation. We've got HTC Peep included. Um, quick look up, things like that. Weather, YouTube. Wi-Fi hotspot built right in so that you can share your connection. Now what about data speeds? Well, this will do 3, 3G on T-Mobile. In fact, let's really quick turn off the Wi-Fi so that we can actually do some real-time benchmarking of the HSDPA speeds that you're getting. This doesn't do the HSPA plus higher speed uh, internet ac access that you get on some of the 4G T-Mobile phones, but the speeds are quite good as we're going to see. That wasn't a good run, but let's do a run now. We've got three out of four bars. Let's see what we get running the speed test here. 728 millisecond ping. And here we go. This is very typical of, of T-Mobile's 3G network, about 2.9 megabits per second down and a solid 1.7, 1.8 megabits per second up. And that's the final, final verdict there. If we go over to the results panel, you can see all the other tests I've run. Ignore anything with the little Wi-Fi logo. So 3 down, 2.4, 2.1, 2.1, 1.6, 2.9. So you get pretty fast data speeds on this. So it's definitely uh, a worthy device of T-Mobile's 3G network with, with pretty, pretty strong data speeds there. Of course, also with HTC Sense, the new version, you get the improved notification shade, which will actually include uh, your, your last used application. So you can either use that to toggle between apps or tap and hold of the home button to go into an app that you've recently visited. And of course, many other applications are adorned with HTC Sense. So if we go into the mail application, this has the, you know, the HTC Sense interface, which is great because the stock Android mail application annoyingly puts the Compose Mail button behind the menu key. But on HTC uh, Sense, they put it right out in front so it's easy to access. Also, these sliders are configurable. If you tap and hold on one of them, you can actually bring down different ones to the bottom slider or remove them and have kind of a minimal design like I have here. And this goes through a lot of different programs like contacts and phone and other things like that. It's a really good experience. And the, the camera, I should add, ha has those on-screen effects. So if we go to the little wand over here, we can change it to distortion. You can move around your finger. A lot of other photo booth-like effects that you can choose from right on screen and have them be, be rendered sort of in real time. We're going to talk more about photo samples and the camera, the 720p recording capability of the Incredible S in the full review. But as a little preview, so far we're impressed by the imaging capability of this phone. So that concludes the software review of the HTC Incredible S. Again, we know what to expect on an HTC device. There's no real surprises at this point. They haven't upgraded their version of Sense for this particular device, which is a little bit unfortunate, but HTC Sense is very mature. It's a great Android interface. A lot of people agree that it's the best Android interface. The device is fast. It does good data speeds although it's strangely not as fast as a last generation HTC high-end smartphone, but in day-to-day -day operation, it is generally fast, bouncing between applications using the 768 megabytes of RAM, allows for pretty fast operation, nothing incredible, uh, but, but certainly it performs quite well. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. That's it for now.